Okay, the second of two videos on curve sketching using derivatives and other features. And same learning goal, we're going to look at some specific features of a function and we're going to use first and second derivatives and all that stuff to come up for sketch. So this is one sketching technique, okay? You've probably seen one or two others before by now. Um, for example, using parameters. Well, th the parameters thing doesn't work so well here, but our uh, first and second der derivatives plus um, some key features of functions can give us a decent sketch. So let's hop to it. We have, I say, eight steps. And uh, don't worry, these will be repeated below when we do a worked example. And I'll go through them really quickly because I know your eyes are not painted on and most likely you can read this. But um, consider these steps. So I'm going to take the y-intercept then using analytical methods, the uh, x-intercept or sets, the uh, coordinates of the stationary point in their nature, max or min or point of horizontal inflection, determine in step four the coordinates of any points of inflection, so find the coordinates of it, um, then consider the any restrictions that the domain has imposed or has been imposed on the domain, and Number six, calculate the coordinates of the end points. Remember that from the previous video, okay? Uh, if applicable, asymptotes, okay? It may not be applicable, but we need to check it if there's any asymptotes. And then we need to consider the direction of the function as x approaches very, very big numbers, positive and negative. So approaching positive infinity and also negative infinity it gives us a nice shape. The last two... Um, really help us with the shape. So let's have a look at a particular example here and let's consider this one. It's similar to one of the functions seen in the previous video. I'm going to use the eight steps to sketch that and then we've got a question to answer. State the phase of x where the function is decreasing and where the function is concave up. So let's get to it and I've made a start already okay to get the ball rolling. The first step was to determine the y-intercept. The y-intercept is when x equals 0, and in fact the origin, interestingly enough, is the y-intercept. So that's also going to end up being one of the x-intercepts. Okay, so um, I'm going to write that in there. The origin, if it's a y-intercept, it's also an x-intercept. Think about that. I can hear the gears of your brain churning away. Good. Now, uh, to get the x-intercepts, all of them, we have to set the uh, function equal to zero, we solve it and um, we have it factorized there so that means the null factor law means that x cubed equals zero therefore x is zero and that actually is the point zero zero okay if you put zero into the function you get zero the other one uh, according to the null factor law is x take four equaling 0, so x equals 4. Okay, and we'll have 4 to the power 4 minus 4 times 4 cubed, and that comes out as 0. So y is 0. So that gives us the other point, 4, 0. So there are our intercepts, x-intercepts. Because we've got to determine the coordinates of the stationary point or points in their nature, what are they, max, min, or point of horizontal inflection? I've gone ahead and taken the first and second derivative there. Now stationary points, okay, is when the derivative is equal to zero. So dy dx equals zero. dy dx is four x cubed minus twelve x squared. And let's set that equal to zero. That means four x cubed equals twelve x squared. Actually no, I won't do that because this function can equal 0 at a certain point. Um, I'll factorise it, that's better, and I'll factor law again, so cut a long story short, x will equal 0 and x will equal 3. Now to check the nature of these two stationary points, one being at x equals 0, the other being at x equal 3, we need to set the second derivative equal uh, yeah we need to find what what the values of the second derivative are at these 
points here. So at so we're going to add x equals zero and also at x equals three. Okay, so at x equals zero, let's check it out. So subbing zero into the second derivative there, we can see we'll get zero. So there we go. So what if it's uh, approaching zero from the x's approaching zero from uh, less than zero from the negative end, or approaching it from below, we might say. From previous video, you would have seen this use of notation a few videos back and also approaching zero from above all right notice the sign is after the, the numeral we have um, numbers that are less than zero you sub numbers like that in there you'll get a positive answer okay for example you could sub in um, what's below zero but close to zero okay you could try negative 0.5 for example okay that's just one possible number and something that's above zero you might want to try one or a half or something like that. One's nice and easy to sub in, isn't it? Okay, so probably not a half, probably one. You'll get negative values if you sub one of those numbers in. So the concavity does change. So from all our previous work, that's good because that means we've confirmed that it's a point of horizontal inflection. It is a stationary point and the concavity does change so that's all cool the other one was when x equals 3 so again we check that second derivative so approaching 3 from below and approaching 3 from above and at 3 so let's sub 3 into the second derivative to see what the nature of the stationary point is now by the way if um, this is not zero here in this cell like this was zero. We don't need the other two So remember where this is the second derivative here 12x squared take 24x and uh, 12x squared take 24x is uh, Not zero when we sub in three. Let's have a look at what it is It's actually negative 27. So the important thing about that is that it's negative Okay, so negative, which means it's concave up. Okay, so concave up. So the point at uh, whatever, the, yeah, the point um, 3, comma, negative 27, 3, 3, negative 27 is in the middle of concave up. It's a stationary point, so it's a minimum. It's a minimum turning point. So it's not a point of inflection, so we don't need to analyze the see if the concavity has changed because it hasn't. Okay, that it hasn't. So just summarizing that point there, we have two uh, where are we there? We have two stationary points. One is a point of horizontal inflection, and the other one is a minimum turning point, concave up, in other words. So that region it'll be concave up handy stuff because we've got to sketch it soon now we've already got in the next step um, one of the points of inflection we've all already got a point of horizontal inflection but remember some points of inflection are not horizontal and so we need to check that out and that's a job for the second derivative so doink second derivative and when the second derivative equals zero that's what we need to analyze all right so so when 0 equals 12x squared take 24x okay and so we have 0 equals uh, 12x outside of x take 2 and the null factor law uh, 12x equals 0 x take 2 equals 0 so that that's pretty obvious that x is 0 is one solution and x is 2 is another solution now we might have this 
x equals 0 already. We do, we have that one there. So we don't need to look at that again, that's a point of horizontal inflection. What about this one? Okay, well let's check that one out at x equals 2. So we do another one of our little tables here. Um, so x is 2. And the second derivative. So subbing 2 into our second derivative there. We essentially get 48 take 48 which is 0. So that's good because that's our point of inflection step 1. And uh, 2 from just below 2 or 2 from approaching 2 from uh, under 2 and approaching 2 from above. For example you could sub 1 into this equation so you get 12 take 24 that's negative okay and something bigger so we could sub in 3 I suppose so you got 9 by 12 which is 108 take away 24 by 3 that's most definitely positive so it's a point of inflection because the concavity changed concavity changed um, but it, it did not show up um, as a stationary point in that earlier step so it's not a point of horizontal inflection it's not a stationary point but it is a point of inflection okay uh, one of the other types okay so we need the y value now so we have um, points of inflection again we already know about zero zero the other one it's 2, alright, we need to sub that into the equation, if you sub it into the original equation you'll find you get negative 16, you can check that yourself, alright, and what I mean by that is subbing it into the original equation like so. Alright, so we have a point of horizontal inflection and then just some other type of point of inflection there, okay. There haven't been any restrictions on the domain, so uh, unlike what we went through um, in the previous video okay it's a continuous function um, and we don't have to look uh, look at it in terms of being stuck in an interval so therefore the endpoints are not applicable so we do need to talk about um, the max and min global and local which we'll do and and we'll do that in the last step so it's coming up now from previous work asymptotes is when it is there any convergence does it converge at one or both ends to a particular value okay so um, you can see asymptotes like that okay or like that when we saw exponential functions okay um, we does it converge to a y value well let's see and the other the other way that we look and look at that too are there any discontinuities possible okay because it can't ever reach the asymptote therefore it's not a valid input okay so uh, are there any uh, any non-valid values of x and y well there isn't because this thing's a polynomial so it's y equals if you look at it, it's y equals x to the power 4 minus 4x cubed and its domain is all real numbers okay its range is defined for all of those values of x so the range is continuous there's no discontinuities and uh, every value 
it's a polynomial function every value of x is possible and therefore there is a value for y for each of those values of x now I didn't I didn't write y is a uh, y is an element of real numbers I didn't write that no that's not true because there there uh, when we see the uh, that might not be true you see the thing might have a turning point and it might not go below a certain minimum value okay but all x values are po possible so we're not going to be worried about any asymptotes it's not going to converge to anything okay and another way of checking for asymptotes as I said is x approaches positive negative infinity okay now let's think about the way we deal with infinity is we keep on mentally substituting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger numbers look at the behavior okay so this is about behavior same with the step above it was about behavior you see so as it approaches very big numbers okay as it approaches positive infinity what we're going to find is this first term will outstrip the second term okay as we get bigger and bigger so that means y will approach infinity as well so as x approaches positive infinity y will approach positive infinity as well so that'll kick up on at, at the ends okay and there's no there's no limitation to the restriction on the domain you see so that will just keep happening and as x approaches negative infinity okay so we see we have got to be a bit more careful here so we've got um, something to the power 4 which is always going to be positive minus something that could be po positive or negative but if you're talking negative numbers alright it's only going to be negative here so 4 times 4 becomes inconsequential when we're talking about really big numbers so we got um, minusing some negative quantity subtracting a negative is adding a positive and so we basically have uh, an enormous number plus some other number and that's going to approach positive infinity as well so it kicks up that way so let's put it together sketching it now I'm going back and the important points were 0 0 1 2 3 4 4 0 putting some increments on it so um, I've got an increment of 1 going and along the x-axis there increments of 5 increments worth 5 on the vertical axis another important point was a point of inflection at uh, 2 negative 16 and also there was a turning point we discovered at point 3 negative 27 okay so I'll put those in there we know that it, a few things about it. there's no asymptotes um, and because one thing I forgot to um, elaborate on all right was that we found that it kicks up at both sides so the global the global maximum all right there won't be a local maximum in this one because okay, no uh, turning points um, maximum turning points so it'll be global max only in fact there won't be a global maximum because it goes to uh, infinity so there's no local or global maximums okay all right um, global and local minimums is one and the same here it's because it kicks up at both positive uh, extremis and negative extreme um, basically the the minimum will only be uh, that, mi that minimum turning point that 3 um, negative 27 this one here okay so that was the minimum turning point so it's both the global and the local so we say it's the global minimum at 3 negative 27 
let's put all the stuff in in an order that suits you it suits me to put the turning point here just part of there that's point of inflection non-horizontal okay we have another point of inflection as well as X and Y intercepts it's three things there it has uh, another so that's where it cuts through and we know it kicks up uh, for extreme negative values and the in other part of the inflection goes like that and we know that it comes through here okay because it goes down and it turns around down there so here we go okay up it zooms and it just keeps on belting away so we put arrows on the end and then it keeps on belting up like that there and um, if I just show you using technology that um, that's pretty much what it looks like okay so you can see it uh, close or further away okay and it's got all those same points on it there lastly we got these two little questions to answer which won't take very long state the values of X where the function is decreasing and concave up so decreasing is when the derivative is negative concave up a la that is when the second derivative is positive so now 4x cubed equals 12x squared when x equals 0 and x equals 3 this statement or this inequality here um, 4x cubed take 12x squared will be less than 0 when x is less than 0 and when when x is less uh, than 3 but also when x is greater than 0 so what we write is 0 is less than x which is less than 3 okay um, and that is reflected in the graph so it's decreasing the whole way along here but um, it's it's decreasing then it's not decreasing at the origin it's it's actually got an inflection point there then it's decreasing until it gets to the term uh, the turning point non-inclusive the last part with the concave up scenario um, we found already where the minimum is we have to work out now um, what's the interval where it is concave up we know that at zero zero there's a point of horizontal inflection we also know that the next point of inflection uh, the next significant point is at 2 negative 16 the other point of inflection the uh, any other important points like the next turning point is not till you get to 3 so this is the this is the zone we're interested in because the points of inflection is where the concavity changes so we need to stick within that so it's going to be before this point and after that point so it's when x is less than zero not inclusive and x is greater than two and then forever onwards it'll be concave up and that's verified there from the graph okay so to the left of zero zero it's concave up then after zero zero it's also concave up um, sorry not after zero after this point of horizontal inflection here I should say there there okay so concave up there then concave up there the rest of it is concave down.